live from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in London, England. This is theCUBE, HP Discover, HPE Discover. Make sure you get that E in there. HP Enterprise is the first show for their official spin-out split of the two companies. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Casey Choi, VP of Global Solutions, Architecture and Engineering at HPE, HP Enterprise. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Talk about the 10 year difference between today yeah. and 10 years ago, because microservices is really exciting. Yeah. You look at the possibilities, a lot of leverage there, cost to deploy is lower, agile. Right. Everything's lining up nicely for this yeah. new development tsunami, yeah. application tsunami coming. Yeah. Um, 10 years ago, we had web service, we had service-oriented architectures, right. we had these things, but what's different now? I'm not saying there's some cost differences, but yeah. compare and contrast, and then how that's making that, uh, this today's architecture more compelling to make moves now. Yeah, I, I, John, I think, I think it's a generational difference, right? We're talking almost a generation, and, and part of it, frankly, is, is the generational difference, right? We've got a new um, generation of developers, uh, we've got a new generation of folks that are coming into this space as, uh, you know, uh, enterprise architects, developers, coders, and engineers that are really, uh, you know, they, 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 they think differently, frank, frankly. They're taught differently in terms of the computer science that's coming out today, right? And, uh, you know, the things that we learned in terms of structured languages and, uh, you know, the way to, you know, program for things uh, has some fundamentally changed. So I think one fundamental difference is you've got a, a very brand new generation of people that think differently. Uh, they're thinking much more in a runtime model uh, versus a uh, you know a compile model to kind of break it down that way, mm -hmm. right? Where uh, versus being you know something that's preformed and ready to go, you're composing these things, you're composing these services, and you're delivering them through very different mechanisms. You know, ten years ago we were just at the cusp of virtual machines. Now we're at the cusp of delivering services through things like container-based technologies and you know, offering tremendous isolation and security that we didn't have before, right, that was preformed in the services. So, I think there's quite a bit of difference between what was there, the concepts that were out there So virtualization the was, has yeah. been a big enabler. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, as will, as we move forward, more of the container uh, type technologies that are coming out from the open source community and others. And uh, I think it's going to be that next leap forward because now you're going to be able to do this at a more granular level. Um, you know, you're going to be able to do some separation around the data plane aspects of it. So. Uh, we're getting better and better at the composability of these services, and uh, you know we're seeing that reflected everywhere. Um, so one of the conversations we had on, on yeah. our crowd chats uh, a couple weeks ago was this notion of in the 80s and 90s with the mini computer generation, two, I guess yeah. three generations ago or, or two generations ago, we saw the the, the boom of applications. Sure. Now they yeah. were siloed based applications. We prepackaged they had some silo. Act activity going on big data, but you know, yeah. we saw the, the companies get formed, you know, Oracle, Siebel, all these companies, sure. um, but they were fully integrated software. Are we going to see something similar? Because if you look at today's infrastructure and architecture with DevOps, mm -hmm. you're kind of talking about this application explosion. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you can almost tease out and say, well, based on the thesis of cloud and agile and containers, this new enablement yeah. is disruptive in a sense that there should be a slew of apps, and then what's the implication, if true, what's the implications of that thesis? Yeah, so John, you're asking me on the crystal ball thing, right? That's the <laughs> question. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure we're going to see, you know, the level of uh, vertical integration that we saw, you know, in that last wave, right? Where we saw a lot of those companies form up because uh, the stuff was complicated and required a degree of vertical integration, it required a degree of industry integration that, uh, uh, that was required to stand these up. I mean, think about the man hours it took to you know, stand up an Oracle environment or an SAP environment or any environment for that matter, right? It, uh, it was a significant yeah. effort, uh, not only cost-wise but time-wise. Uh, I think this next wave is different. I think it's going to be much more built on uh, uh, an open construct. Uh, I think it's going to be platform-based. Uh, I think it's going to be driven by, again, uh, a set of uh, capabilities and offerings. I mean, everything from 
uh, what's available in the infrastructure stack all the way up through the, de the development tools and uh, I think it's going to be you know, primarily based on you know, who can provide the best ecosystem for that versus again being the vertical integrator of all of that. So I think the model's quite different. Um, I think the end objectives are similar in a lot of cases, right? We're still going to need systems of record and transactional systems, but they're going to be overlaid, much more transient okay. in the way that we look at these applications. All right, hold on, maybe before I get back. Yeah. So let's back up, it's a little yeah. pre-crystal ball because I agree with you. I think, right. I think that, that bloated software model is, is pretty much over. We, sure. We've seen yeah, that. Absolutely. But at the top of the stack, this lightweight is a new is the new thing, right? So when sure. someone say, I want to have a lightweight software, yeah. they're, because it's runtime, because they don't have a lot of, they yeah. don't want to have a lot of stuff going on that they sure. can reuse code, infrastructure as code, DevOps. So, more of the lightweight applications seem to be emerging, whether that's an iPhone app or yeah. a native app, maybe some level of integration at the top of the stack, but not like fully integrated. Right, Do you right. see that trend, I mean? I absolutely do, and a lot of it's just again driven by uh, the appetite for uh, freshness, newness, uh, functionality. I mean, just take a look at you know most folks today. I heard a story uh, that was told by one of our CTOs the other day where uh, you know, everyone's got these, right, where you know he has young daughters and uh, the way they select banking services today is based on really the, the type of applications that are available through the App Store, right? And what is available, what seems to suit their needs, a lot of it's very personalized, and personalization is going to drive a lot more need for, uh, you know, much more impermanence in the application. So uh, think about what's, what's driving the appetite, and the appetite is being driven by the fact that none of these applications last that long, right? And because of that, you are inferring a sense of lightweightness. What isn't lightweight though is the backend stuff, right? You've got to preserve that uh, you know, data chain of custody, you've got to have transactional integrity, you've got to have all that. So we still like to try to remind people you know, at Hewlett Packard Enterprise that yes, uh, you know, the front end needs to be custom and it needs to be you know, very you know, personal, but yeah. you do have some, some heavy duty you know, transactional. This is what you were saying earlier, but you got to have that engine underneath the Absolutely, apps. Absolutely, yeah. And the DevOps guys want to have composable architectures sure. where they can do a lot of fast, Runtime with our uh, with microservices, real time. Right. Those guys aren't worrying about configuration management. Well, no, they want to yeah. just they want to actually have that provision on its own. I think they're worrying about it, but they're worrying less about it. And I think what they're doing is they're worrying about it in smaller <laughs> chunks, right? So I mean, they don't want to worry about it's it. A fast, <laughs> it's a fast fail men men mentality, uh, and and it also says. Yeah. And again, I'm not criticizing it. I think it's I think it's the right yeah. sort of model for what but we have there today. Yet. It's contemporary, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But what it's saying is, you know, I can do this, and you know, I'm only going to be taking down a, a part of my application versus you know yeah. having a huge degree of dependency within the code. And I think, it's, I think it's the model for today, right? It is a continuous service delivery model which basically says, look, I'm going to push a lot of things to production but I'm going to do it in such a way where you know, a lot of this doesn't have as uh, strong a monolithic dependency as we've had in the past. And uh, again, I, I think uh, this well, is a like contemporary model. It's like the old software model. development models we used to do our own graphics. Sure, Build right. your own libraries per application, vertically integrated. Right. That went away. Now DevOps guys, they don't want to worry about it but sure. they might have to but the DevOps movement says, hey, there's stuff orchestrating and automating right. on its behalf. Right. So there's so much, not so much they don't care about I, I, it. I'd like to have people look at it in a Jeffrey Moore kind of a way, right? You're going to have strong systems of engagement, right, that you're going to build on top of systems of record. Let's just make sure that you, you are building for the right specification. You know, systems of engagement have to move fast, right? They have to be you know, temporal by nature, yeah, yeah. they have to be customized, but you know, that basis for what, what happens on, on the back end side is going to be just as critical. And in many cases, a lot of that, fortunately or unfortunately, is legacy. And uh, that binding has to be there. And uh, yeah. you know, I think we're in a good place because uh, we've been able to address and, and kind of understand both, both sides of that. And, and, and honestly, yeah. uh, I'm not sure bimodality is the right answer. I think you got to do both, right? You can't yeah, do right. one or the other, you have to do both. And uh, Well, and his uh, latest yeah. is, is systems of, in, of intelligence, which sure. bring together analytic exactly. and transaction. Yeah, you get the you know, cognitive and the predictive starting right. to come into the model here, right? And yeah. in that sense, uh, you're driving that further and further away, and uh, I think it blends, you know, very well into what the t you know industry is talking about in terms of continuous service delivery, because that's probably the penultimate example, right? Because you're modifying what yeah. is happening, you know, at the at the production delivery side, you know, as it's as it's being learned or as it's yeah. being utilized. You Get know, foundational, uh, have some foundational yeah. work done, yeah. and then have some building blocks to work with engagement. Right. 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 Casey, final question: sure. um, What's what's the um, your take on the show from a customer standpoint? 
looking yeah. around, briefings you've been through, early customers you've talked to, um, or, yeah. or so you're feeling, what's the customer view of this show for the takeaway? Uh, yeah. Is it that they have to move now, that the architectures are in place, HP's the bridge to the future? What's the overall take? John, I think there's two things, and you know, you, you, know, you, you guys and I were together in, in, in Vegas back in, in the summertime, and uh, think about back then, you know, and, and what we have on the floor today. I mean, this is organized very much around these transformational themes, right? We were, we were just hinting at it back at the time, and, and quite honestly, a year ago, we weren't there. Um, I think this is a pretty clear indicator of what the new company is, is going to be about and wants to be about, which is, we're going to talk a lot more about outcomes. Uh, you know, we want to try to address, in some respects, a different audience, a different buyer. Uh, we still think IT is exceptionally important to this, and we want to make them a pivotal piece of what goes on, but you know, we all recognize that we're all going to have to move right to this model where uh, the conversation is different. You know, how we look at technology and what its role is is different. But uh, I can't think of a better you know response to it than to say, look around on, on the show yeah. floor. And, this you know, is how the new HP. This is the new HP Enterprise, right? And Hewlett Packard Enterprise. It's organized this way, and uh, I think we're aspiring to be yeah. you know again that company that that helps drive that. And well, we're excited that. to cover you guys. I mean, now that. The whole team is together formally. Great. And you guys are focused, younger, feels like, you know, split in half, you know, I'm 50 feels today. Feels younger? <laughs> All right, good, good. Maybe somebody will rub <laughs> off on me, I appreciate that. No, thanks. Feels fresh. All right, good, good to hear that. Casey and, Choi uh, here inside the cube, getting the signal from noise, getting ready for the general sessions. We'll be right back with more live coverage here in London, England after the short break.